It all began last year when a handful of students with apparently too much time on their hands circulated a petition demanding that the colonial mascot be removed and replaced. They wrote, this is from the petition, the use of colonials, no matter how innocent the intention, is received as extremely offensive, not only by students of the university, but by the nation and the world at large. <laughs> the petition went on. The historically negatively charged figure of colonials has too deep a connection to colonization. And they said this of George the Colonial, big mascot, uh, glorifies the act of systemic oppression. <laughs> now, the moment that I read this position, or pe petition rather, I knew one thing, I knew one thing for certain. This had to be written by white liberals. <laughs> I knew it, I knew, because the way, you know, the language it would make it seem like it was written by somebody who is a recent immigrant or the child of some oppressed group, but I knew it wasn't. The only thing I knew for sure from that language is that it was white liberals. And then I Googled it and it would appear that I'm correct. I don't wanna make assumptions. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the students, but, but it would appear to be the case that I'm right. How did I know that? Because this sort of activism is always the product of white liberals pretending to be offended on behalf of other people. It's never Native Americans who are clamoring to change the name of the Washington Redskins or the Cleveland Indians. It is always white liberals pretending to be offended on their behalf. It must be nice. Do these white liberals have jobs? Do they have anything to do? Do they have any problems of their own, I wonder? This is the best evidence that I have ever found for white privilege, is the fact that white liberals pull these stunts all the time. If you have so much time and emotional energy that you are spending all of it, pretending to be offended on other people's behalf, you have privilege. The petition got 514 signatures. So this means, <laughs> It's a big school, but you know, they got 514, so it was taken up for a vote. And the student body voted on whether or not to remove Colonial as the mascot. The measure passed this past March. That is the bad news. The good news is it passed by a pretty slim margin. Just 54% of the students who voted, voted to get rid of poor old George the Colonial. The detailed numbers are more revealing because only 5,000 students actually participated in the vote. Now the school has about 12,000 undergrads and about 25,000 or 26,000 uh, students total. So if you look at the percentage overall, as a percentage of the undergraduate population, only 42% of people voted and only 23% voted to remove the mascot. If you look at this as a percentage of the total university population, then just 20% voted and only 11% voted to remove the colonial. Those numbers are about what I would expect. Because if you want to pretend that George the Colonial is offensive, you will be highly motivated to vote on this issue. If you are a normal person, you will not be motivated to, to waste your time on this ridiculous controversy. 